Hi, my name is Sean Steed. I'm with the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Science, Extension, Hillsborough County. This seminar is a Southern Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education on-farm research grant looking at recycling used potting soil with solarization. To take a look at the background sustainable issues, new potting soil costs about $35 per cubic yard. Nurseries dump about 10% of plants and soil during production. So there's a tremendous loss of potting soil in the industry. The primary components are peat and pine bark, and both of these have had mentions of shortages in recent years. Most of the nurseries leave this soil that's dumped in a pile on site, and a few nurseries do dispose of it off site. So there's a tremendous economic and natural resource loss with the dumping of used potting soil within the industry. Here's an example of a problem or opportunity, however you want to look at it, of a dumped soil pile at the back of a nursery. And for reference, there's a yardstick on the side. Here are two more examples of piles of soil at a nursery. On the left, you can see a pile with a pole that's about 12 foot high. And on the right, you can see a pile where you can actually drive up and dump. And in the background, you can see the tops of the trees. So in order to make this uh, problem an opportunity, we needed to deal with a few of the plant pests and some other issues. Weeds were present in high numbers. Uh, nematodes were there. Plant pathogens were probably present. And then there were debris, old sticks and plant parts uh, that were left over. So we had to figure out a way to deal with all that. Our proposal was to approach the USDA Southern Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education on-farm research grant. And we wanted to use solarization, which is an extremely low input method to sterilize soil. And we got with our on-farm cooperator, Stardust Tree Farms, to help us out. Previous research showed that on a small scale, solarizing soil was absolutely possible and effective, but we wanted to upscale this approach, so we looked at two different methods, a mid-scale design, which was about a one cubic yard amount to recycle, and a large-scale design, which was about 3.5 cubic yards. A literature review was conducted to find out what temperatures we would need to get our solarized soil to eliminate plant pests. In the literature we found that nematodes die at about 120 degrees for 15 minutes. Most plant pathogens die at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. And many weeds will die at 158 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. So what we determined was 140 degrees for about one hour would be considered a successful threshold to eliminate almost all pests. When you're trying to eliminate pests with solarization, you'll need to look at both time and heat levels. Here are two examples. On the left is a fungus, Phytophthora capsii. It took 22 hours at 45 degrees Celsius to eliminate that pest, but only took one hour at 53 degrees Celsius. And on the right is a weed, Solanum nigrum. It took 213 hours at 46 degrees Celsius to kill it but only 20 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius. To start our research, we looked at a mid-scale approach. We took black ground cover polypropylene and a four mil clear layer of polyethylene. We laid that on the ground on a two by four frame holding one cubic yard of soil. We took two sheets of four mil plastic and put it over the top. One was on the soil surface directly contacting the soil and one was suspended above the soil surface. We used hobo data loggers to measure the soil temperatures. We used three probes, one at the top, the mid, and the bottom layers of the pile. We changed poly thicknesses. We used 0.5 mils and we used a one mil for the top sheets. We looked at different configurations and moisture levels, and we ran the experiment three times. We used the ground cover and the four mil poly on the bottom just to prevent any potential pest organisms from recontaminating our pile once it was solarized. Here's a schematic example of what we had in our setup. 
Basically, if you think of a bag with soil within a bag is pretty much what we did. You can see our impermeable layer on the bottom, which was the black ground cover and the plastic sheet. We have three inches of moist soil basically within a bag, the polyethylene sheet wrapping it. And over the top of that, we have another plastic sheet that wraps the entire bottom sheet and soil wrapping that. Here is an example of the temperature data readout we obtained while trying to set the best configuration of plastic, thickness, and moisture levels within the soil. The vertical bars represent one day. We started our experiment on June 24th and ended it on July 15th, and the highest temperatures we got were about 135 degrees at the top of the pile and about 115 degrees at the bottom of the pile. We used this soil to see how well the solarization killed weeds. We took three trays, we put untreated soil and solarized soil within those trays. We put them in a greenhouse for 14 days, we water them daily, and then we took weed counts. Here's what we found from the germination trial. In untreated soil, we averaged about 240 weeds per tray. In solarized soil, we wound up getting about 14.7 weeds per tray for a 94% reduction in weeds. Here's a picture of what we saw from the germination trial. On the left is the untreated soil. On the right is the solarized soil. Here's what we learned from our mid-scale experiment. Too much water in the soil greatly reduced the heat transfer to the bottom of the pile. We found that about three inches of soil depth or less is better. Two to six inches of height on the top poly covering worked well, and definitely two sheets were needed to create the heat needed to solarize the soil. You need a sturdy structure with the plastic to remove the rain. We took what we learned from the mid-scale approach and we applied it to the large-scale design. Our plot size was 24 foot by 24 foot. We used the same ground cover and the 4 mil poly liner. We used a front end loader to transfer soil from the dumped soil pile to our plot. We hand smoothed the soil and removed debris. We added water to moisten the soil. We used two sheets of 4 mil poly separated by galvanized pipes. And we ran the experiment two times. After we ran the large-scale experiment, we repeated the weed germination study, but this time we also incorporated new purchase soil as a control element. Here's a picture of our plot setup. In the background you can see our mid-scale approach, and in the foreground you can see our large-scale approach. You can see the bag within a bag design, and the top layer of plastic sheeting is pulled back so you can see the support structures. Here is the readout of the temperature data once we incorporated everything we learned from the mid-scale approach. The vertical lines represent days again. Our experiment started on August the 20th and ended September 3rd. The red horizontal line is our 140 degree Fahrenheit temperature threshold. And you can see almost immediately on the first day we exceeded our threshold. The highest temperatures we were able to obtain were 159 degrees. We repeated the germination of weeds study that we mentioned previously. In the untreated soil, we averaged about 89 weeds per tray. In the solarized soil, we averaged 10.6 weeds per tray. And in the fresh soil, we had no weeds per tray for an overall 88% reduction in weeds through solarization. What we found was that less soil depth was the key to getting those high temperatures to the bottom of the pile. We also looked at nematodes through an assay, and there was a reduction in numbers from the untreated soil, about 73 versus 10. And those that were found within the solarized soil were killed. When we looked at the solarized soil physical and chemical attributes, there was not many differences from untreated soil. Total porosity, container capacity, airspace, and bulk density did not change. 
The chemical changes were very slight. There were no changes in EC, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium. Nitrate nitrogen availability increased after 14 days of treatment from about 51.5 versus 30 part per million. And there was a slight decrease change in the pH. Overall, everything looked very promising. We took soil from the solarized plot and we conducted a growth study. We compared fresh soil to solarized soil at different rates and we looked at two different species of plants to see how they would finish growing. We used liners and we stepped them to three gallon plants. We started the experiment on September the 30th, 2014. We used a randomized control block design with three reps. On the viburnums, we looked at width and height on the growth. And on the crepe myrtles, we just looked at height. Here's a picture of the viburnum study. On the left we have the 100% new soil, that's our control. In the middle we have 66% new soil and 33% solarized soil. And on the plant on the right we have 33% new soil with 66% combined solarized soil. And you can see there's not much differences in growth. And here's the data from the viburnum height. On the bottom you can see the proportion of new soil to solarized soil. The graph on the left is 100% new soil, the middle one has 66% new soil, and the right one has 33% new soil. You can see on the vertical axis is the height in inches, so there were no significant differences between all three treatments. Here are the statistics for the viburnum width. The graph is set up in the same manner as previously mentioned, and you can see there are no significant differences in viburnum width. Here is a picture of the crepe myrtles from the growth study. On the left we have the control with 100% new potting soil. In the middle we have 66% new potting soil with 33% solarized soil. And on the right we have 33% new soil combined with 66% solarized soil. Here are the results of the data from the crepe myrtle height. On the horizontal axis we have the percentage of new soil and on the vertical axis we have the mean height in inches. The bar on the left is 100% new soil, that's our control. The middle bar had 66% new soil and the bar on the right had 33% new soil and there were no significant differences between the three treatments. One of the major things we wanted to look at in this study was not only the efficacy of treating soil with solarization but would it be cost effective? On the left you can see the material cost in our large scale design wound up being about $233.62. On the right are the labor costs associated with treating the soil. And when you look at it on a per cubic yard basis it wound up being about $4.67 in labor costs to solarize the soil. If you want to know if this is economically feasible Basically, new soil cost about $35 a cubic yard. Solarized soil wound up being about $4.67 per cubic yard for a savings of about $30 per cubic yard. If you look at your material payback time, if you wind up treating 7.7 .7 cubic yards of soil or using the large scale method, you would pay back your materials in a little over two turns. So in summary, solarized soil was a great way to recycle old potting soil back into production. In our area, solarization added about 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit to whatever the maximum daily temperature was. And basically what you're doing with solarized soil is you're substituting a fraction of labor cost for new soil. Solarized soil performed as well as new soil at 66% mix in our trials. And what we also learned is it might be better to let the weeds germinate for about a week first and then go through the solarization process. The one drawback to this method is that cloud cover and rain will reduce the total heat load to the system. You're going to need the sun to do solarization. And we found that the top sheet was essential to maintaining and getting our maximum temperatures within the treatment area.
So in the final analysis, overall, solarized soil seemed to be an extremely sustainable way to recycle old potting soil back into production. And here's a picture of our on-farm cooperator, John Pearson with Stardust Tree Farm. And there's some 15-gallon notches with 50% solarized soil and 50% new soil. I'd like to thank our cooperators for making this research possible. First, the USDA Southern Sustainable Agriculture and Research and Education Grant, Stardust Tree Farms with operator John Pearson, the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Department of Plant Industry, Diamond R Fertilizer, Hillsborough County Soil Water Conservation District, and Pro Growers for their liners. I hope you found this presentation useful. If you have any other questions about this research or using solarization to recycle used potting soil, you can send me an email to the address on the screen. And you can find a detailed fact sheet on what we learned about this research at our web address listed below. If you happen to use this information to start recycling solarized soil, please send me an email and let me know your results. Thank you for your time.